everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Anka and today I have my bookshelf tour for all of you so why don't you grab yourself something to drink and hopefully enjoy this video So I am so excited to do my 2022 bookshelf tour because this is actually the third year I'm doing a bookshelf tour and I just love looking back on the old videos and see how much shelves have changed over the years. Plus, I absolutely love watching other people's bookshelf stores. It's one of my favorite things. I just feel like it's such a fun way to get to know a little bit about someone. Plus, like, getting ideas for my own shelves and just getting some reading inspiration, things like that. But before I get into these shelves, I actually have my TBR shelf at my boyfriend's place. So I will show a picture here. And... The reason I have it at his house is because I do pretty much all of my physical reading on the weekends and I would keep dragging back and forth my entire TBR pretty much because I'm a mood reader every single weekend. So he was like, why don't you just take one of the shelves and leave it here? So that is what I did and I made it a goal I think last year or something like that to keep my physical TBR as small as I possibly can. I usually try to keep no more than 10 to 15 books on there so that's why it's a pretty small shelf. But yeah, that's over there and now without any further ado, let's get into my shelf. Okay, so this is a little overview of my shelves. And as you can see at the top here, I have a big mirror. It is because I get ready here in the morning as well. And I obviously need to see what I'm doing when I'm putting on my makeup and doing my hair. So let's just go from left to right. So over here, I have some cute plants. I love having plants um, and in front of my shelves. I think it just adds like such a cute little vibe. And don't mind that mess there. I'm trying to use the plants to hide that because it is for the lights. And then on that side, I, well, I have my coffee, which is getting cold because I'm talking too much. And I have this cute little mug that says just one more chapter with my bookmarks in it. Like these are some of the bookmarks. Honestly, I know I have more somewhere else, but like I love these Farrah and Resand ones that I got for Christmas. Like they are so pretty. And another plant, I don't have this one for very long, but I'm like hoping that over time it will like go down my shelves and it will be like a vibe that I love at the moment. So yeah, now let's just go onto my shelves and again, I'm just gonna go left to right. So over here, I have all of my Shadow Hunter books. Like, I am so proud of this shelf. I have read like literally every single book that is on my shelves, but I've read pretty much all of these twice, except Chain of Gold. I am currently reading it for the second time because I read all of these books for the first time, I think two years ago. And then last year, my friend Amy and I, we decided that we wanted to reread the books. So we are getting to the end of the read along for the entire series and I am obsessed. So now let's move on to the next shelf with one of my all-time favorite series. It is the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by Holly Jackson. This one was in my top three favorite books. Like I have my uh, top 10 favorite books of the year video. So if you want to know more about this book, go check that out. But this is a mystery series and it is literally everything. So yeah. Then, this is actually a new addition to my shelves. I made this a little while ago and I do have a reel on Instagram on how I made this. But over the past three years, I kept track of all of the books that I read on Goodreads. And I used that to print out every single book that I read and I put it in a jar. So, this is literally all of the books I read over the past three years. And I thought it was such a fun, cute like decorational idea for my shelves and then I have some cute Gilmore Girls related candles from the little bookish company I love these candles they are so pretty and over here this is pretty much like one of those piles that is like I'm not sure where else it would go so I'm just putting it all together like this is sort of a biography this is a Christmas story and a classic. I have some poetry there, just some books that I loved that I didn't know where else to put. But again, 
like I said, I love all of them. So the next shelf, these are candles by A Bookish Flickering and I'm obsessed with these candles, but unfortunately the shop is closing, so yeah. Do you still want to show them off though, but you can't purchase them for yourselves anymore, unfortunately. And behind there, I have a card of the Grisha first, and let's just take it out for a second, because it is so pretty. I got this at a bookstore a while ago, and I just absolutely love this so much, and it like has the order of the books that you should read them in. I love this map and yes, I am realizing it is on the wrong shelves because here I have Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron, the Waterstone Special Editions from Cassandra Clare, like they go with those books, but unfortunately I don't have any other spot on my shelves where I could possibly put this map and since I love this map so much, it, it needed to be shown on my shelves, so yeah. Now we move on to some classics. These are the Wordsworth Special Editions and like these are just so gorgeous. I mean, look at these books and they all have like a quote from the specific book on the back. Like I love them and I have these four here and I actually have Emma by Jane Austen on my TBR as well. So every time I read one of the classics, uh, only after that I will allow myself to purchase a new one. So it's gonna be a while to collect them. That is what I'm doing over here. And then I have an incredibly dead plant, I need to replace that. But isn't it like such a cute idea to have like that cute little teacup? It's, it's such a vibe with the classic books, so it needs a new plant, but I still love the idea. And then I have some bookish teas also from A Bookish Flickering and some candles from Fictional Boutique. And then over here I have some more classics. It is Little Woman and Jane Eyre. And yes, I have Little Woman over here as well. And I plan on purchasing the Wordsworth edition of Anne of Green Gables as well since it is like one of my all-time favorite books. But look at these gorgeous editions. Like, how beautiful is that? Like, I'm absolutely obsessed and honestly I wish I had more room to properly display them but right now I don't so they go over there and then we move on to the next shelf which starts off with the Throne of Class series by Sarah J Maas and I know I'm missing like the the prequel book I do plan on getting that at some point I just haven't had the time yet but I read this series last year and it was so good because I was so nervous to read it after falling in love with the Court of Thrones and Roses series by Sarah J Maas so my expectations for the Throne of Glass series were so high but they totally lived up to the expectations so like I said then there is a Throne of Glass series and then we move on to the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo and that is part of the Grisha first that goes with the map so it's still pretty close together, but anyway. Then we have the Vampire Academy and the spin-off series Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead. And again, like, they wouldn't fit on the same shelf. I have too many fantasy books. No, I don't. I mean, honestly, who could have too many books? Like, never. That, that doesn't exist. So I have those series here, and I love them. I have grown up reading this series. I have read the series in Dutch I think at least twice and then I've read it in English once and I've read this one once and now I want to reread the entire series as well but it's like 12 books and honestly I just want to reread like the Accord of Thorns of Roses series as well and I need to reread this one this year and it's it's so much. Like I want to reread everything that I have because I'm obsessed with all of these books. But then we move on to Wilder Girls by Rory Power and this was such a cover buy for me. I mean, look at this cover. It is so gorgeous. Like, honestly, I want to get my hair cut like this girl. It is so stunning. I, I just, I'm obsessed with this cover and I really, really like this book, but... I have heard many people who don't like it because it, it, it's a required taste. 
And then I have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bordugo, which also takes place in the Christophers. So it is like these books were their first and then you had these books and it like it takes place in the same world but different characters this is what the shadow and bone tv show is based on the combination of these books and these books and it is just so good i honestly can't wait for season two but let's move on we have a little bookish jar from fortune jars i should start opening these stars because they hold beautiful bookish quotes but i just like the look of the stars too much that i haven't really done that yet and then we go on to some like romance and contemporary books like this is a series by jenna evans welsh and it has such beautiful summary romance contemporary vibes all books do follow different characters but they do have the same vibes that's how they are connected and then we have the two older boys i've loved before series by jenny han which has also been made into movies and i really 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 like the movies as well i think they did such a great job even though they missed a few marks when the second book came around but i still really enjoyed it though and then we get to the switch by Beth O'Leary, which was one of my favorite books from last year. The Summer I Didn't Pretty by Jenny Han, which was actually a traveling book. Let me show you. So it got sent around to a bunch of different people and then you write in the book while you're reading it. So everyone has like their own color and that way you can all share your thoughts and feelings while reading this book. So these are all of the people that have read it. And I still need to like reread this one with everybody's comments in them. So I'm really excited to hopefully do that someday soon. And then there's the Fletcher, which was also in my top 10 of favorite books of last year. And I have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which was one of my favorite books of the year before that. And The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which was my favorite read of 2021. Honestly, if you haven't seen my top 10 favorite books of 2021, go watch that video because I, like, honestly, I read so many amazing books last year. So, like, this has, like, so many favorites. I love that part of my shelves. Like, honestly, I love every part of my shelves. And then we already move on to the last part, starting off with the Cruel Print series by Holly Black. So, for that one, I have read this one but honestly the world building i had some trouble with it and i did like the story so i really feel like i should make it a priority to reread those books soon because i feel like then i will so much better understand them and one other thing like first of all the cover is gorgeous but the naked cover of these books i mean just look at that gold foiling it is so freaking beautiful but yeah then we go on to Peter and Pan, which is a prequel story, and The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, which is a prequel story to The Hunger Games. I grew up reading The Hunger Games, and I absolutely loved those books. So I had such high expectations for this one, and it 100% lived up to it. I loved it so much. And then I have the Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom special editions. I loved those books and I can honestly say those books really, really dragged me back into reading fantasy books. Because even though you can see the Twilight series over there, which I loved reading when I was a teenager, I've read those books so many times. Well, honestly, I read them in Dutch and I got the hardcover English versions like two years ago, I think, when... Um, Midnight Sun came out and these are just I grew up reading them but I stopped reading for a few years and these books got me back into fantasy so love those books they have very special meaning and then we move on to Night House by Lee Bardugo which I love and there is supposed to be a second book but like there is no release date or anything yet so I'm kind of worried it might never happen but I would really like to see where this story continues and then we have King of Scars by Lee Bardugo which is also look how pretty this is 
it is so freaking stunning and i actually have rule of wolves which is book two and i have it on my tbr since last march i think and i still haven't read it so i should be really embarrassed by that so yeah let's just move on to the next books which is under the never sky and Judy Evernight by victoria rossi they are like kind of post-apocalyptic books and i still need to read the third book but i really enjoyed reading these books and the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune i read this one last week and it was a gift from my friend amy because she actually got two copies and i was like oh i'm gonna read it it sounds like a like a fun story but honestly i am obsessed with this book it was so so freaking good it is such a beautiful heartfelt story there is so much magic in it i love it i can really recommend that one honestly i can recommend everything that's on my shelf since they are, these are all favorite books of mine because i only keep the books that are four stars or above if i didn't really like them unless they are part of a series because there are some series where i for example didn't like one of the books as much but since it is part of the series and i did like the series i obviously am gonna keep that book but other than that all of these books are four stars or five star reads and the books that i just like i don't i'm not sure if i'm ever gonna reread them i sell those so let's continue the dutch version of a court of silver flames by sarah j mass i still want to get the english version as well and then we move on to like honestly these graphic novels are so cute heartstopper volume one and two by alice osman and look at these drawings they are literally everything and i am supposed to get the third book today or tomorrow so i cannot wait to get my hands on the third one because this story is everything and like ah oh, it is so cute it is it is everything then i have some dutch books by jill mansell and jenny colgan and like this is kind of a mismatch because i have this christmas book the holiday switch by tish marcello and well this isn't a christmas book it's fangirl by rainbow rowell and this is a christmas book again we know shopping by tessa bailey but i kind of decided to go by color i didn't really know where to put these books so they just ended up all together <laughs> but yeah I really enjoyed those and then we have atomic habits by james clear this is a sort of self-help book on how to make changes into your life and i read this last year and it, it was the very first time i started highlighting a book because i wanted to highlight some of the parts that really stood out to me that i found incredibly helpful so i did that throughout this book and honestly, I feel like I should reread this one soon because I feel like this is such a great book to start off a new year with because it's always like the new, new year's resolutions and things like that. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed that one. And then we go over to some contemporary romance hardcovers, which are these three by Casey West. Casey West is such a summer contemporary writer. I absolutely love her books. I'm obsessed. I'm pretty sure I have three or four Casey Wests on my TBR right now, like on my physical TBR, waiting for me to pick them up. But I'm going to wait until spring to read those. And then I have You Have a Match by Emma Lord. And this is honestly the perfect book if you grew up loving the parent trap the way i did because i loved the parent trap and this book has those vibes i really really love this one and then we have since you've been gone by morgan madsen i really really need to pick up more of her books because i loved this one so much and i really want to buy more for spring and summer so then we have some books by karen m mcmanus she is also kind of a mystery writer and her books have somewhat of the same vibes as the one from holly jackson but honestly this series is like everything and these books i just really really liked but it's still really good though and i actually have one of her books in dutch on my shelves waiting to be read and then we end these shelves with a study in childhood series by Brittany cavallero i love love that series we follow the descendants of holmes and watson and it's just such a like 
fun YA series to read. I absolutely love it and I have the fourth book just waiting for me to pick it up. So that is actually it for these shelves. I am actually currently very happy with my shelves. I do have my eyes set on some absolute dream shelves but I need to wait to purchase those until I move out of my parents house again but I really really hope you enjoyed watching my bookshelf tour if you did please consider liking this video and maybe subscribing to my channel it would mean a lot to me and then I will talk to all of you in my next video bye mm -hmm.